What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jet Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I knew it was the final. I, I saw the pop-ups on YouTube, uh, the notifications coming up, um, the, the finale of She-Hulk, you know, people talking about it. I didn't want to know. I just I wanted to see it for myself because there's there seemed to be a lot of chatter going on. Thankfully, I didn't read into it because I probably wouldn't have watched it, but I watched it, Brian. It was okay in the beginning, Brian, but then it just started getting crazy. And then when it got to this, that whole thing with the Kevin thing, oh, I was like, what is this? What? And you, and then this happens, Brian. I was through with the Godzilla movies after I saw Baby Godzilla. When I saw Baby Godzilla, I was out. I was done. I I, I didn't want to see any more. What we just witnessed here, the ridiculous... I am done with the Hulk franchise. I don't care what they do. Because whatever it is that they do, in order to get me back, it has to be quite extreme, Brian. Because what we've gotten here is a freaking joke. Your thoughts? Yeah, so a lot to cover. You started with the finale. We obviously need to talk about Matt Murdock as well, who appears in both episodes eight and nine, more so in eight than in nine. And then just kind of now that we have the totality of She-Hulk and what they did with this season, kind of where we're at. And, you know, you touched on one of the big sort of WTS, like where we're going with this. Um, You know, maybe it's a zag. I didn't hate the finale Um, for one specific reason. Mm -hmm. And it's because, and and I actually did, my favorite part of the finale was the -the over-the-top wall, fourth wall break. Um, And the reason I, it's not that I loved what they did. It's more that I admired it in a way because it was the only time this season, really the only time where I felt like they just said, F it, we're going for this bit. Like, and we're all in on it. And I, I, I have a respect for that, that this show has kind of been, it's felt like it's just been all over the place, but mm-hmm. it hasn't really been all in on any one type of thing. And I think that's really hurt this show. It's part, it's really taken me out of it. It's me, you know, people who watched our prior shows know how we feel about it. You know, some of the, some of the terminology we've used to describe it, but I actually thought in that moment, I was like, okay, you finally said, I'm going to swing for the fences with this, whether people like it or not. No. Yeah. And I didn't think it was a total loss. Like I thought it was, there was some clever pieces to it. Like I thought using the Disney plus menu as an entry point, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. I thought the whole, the mirroring and the ultra meta reflecting of all the critiques of Marvel and its finales and its story. I liked it. I was like, okay, that's actually a good way to use this gimmick. Yeah. And even Kevin, which went a little long for my taste, like I kind of would have, I would have shortened that up, you know, but the idea of Kevin being an AI versus Kevin Feige and then her kind of editing, you know, her finale at a moment where the finale was looking like a caricature of past Marvel finales. I I did actually, I was like, I think this is somewhat clever. I think this is somewhat entertaining. I was like, I don't know that there's enough here that could have sustained an entire season. But it was probably my favorite wall break that they did of the nine episodes. So I kind of bottled that up and was like, I'm somewhat entertained for like these three or four minutes that she was doing it. Um, And I thought Mislani was good. Like when she stopped being the Hulk and kind of started being the pure narrator, I thought she was actually quite good as she's been all season. So that was like my high point. But the, the finale encapsulated my primary dislike of this show, which is that they boxed themselves in tonally to where 
it couldn't do any of the other things that I felt like they wanted to do. So at like the end of episode eight, leading into the finale, where it felt like for the first moment, she was truly angry as the Hulk. And they were trying to make that moment dramatic. For me, that completely flopped because this show has been so no stakes, lighthearted that I didn't buy in that moment or care that like she was being framed by the intelligentsia and that she actually was raging out in public. I was like, and I know they try to sell me on that with the Bill Bixby callback in the credits, but I was like, y- y- that ship sailed in the yeah. premiere. Like you, so I really didn't care for that. And then the, the way they tie it up with the Hulk family reunion and they bring Mark Ruffalo back. I thought bringing him back was a mistake. I don't think he belonged in the finale. I don't think he added anything to the finale. And then, yeah, spoiler alert, to introduce Scar at that moment in time is just, to me, it was pointless. It didn't make me laugh. It didn't entertain me. To your point, it just made, it just was like an, an extra nail in the coffin of what this character has become. But it also felt consistent with this show's inconsistency because it felt like the studio trying to smoosh in these other pieces that they're trying to keep this thing afloat. And as a result, it's just a mess. And I that's why in a weird way, I kind of was like, I almost wish they had just done more of like the super meta wall break because at least that would have been a swing. Like that would have been like a consistent, like we're going to be different. We're going to be way out there. And maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Whereas this just felt like two parts MCU tie-ins, like one part trying to be funny, one part still trying to be dramatic, you know, and then and then an actual maybe entertaining piece. So like for me, I didn't hate the finale overall, but it did just sort of underscore what made this show a failure in my mind um, on, on multiple fronts. So, you know, I think I texted you when we were putting together our list for the thing. I was like, it's finally over. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just yeah, how I feel. yeah, me too. Me too. I, 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 I'm glad that this is over. I'm glad there's a few things to be thankful for. Um, it has uh, allow, allowed us to grow, Brian. We're getting a lot more views. So thank you, She Hulk. I got to give you, give it up to you. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. But, well, can we rewind though to episode eight? Because we do need to talk about Daredevil. Yeah, yeah, Daredevil. Yeah, let's talk. So, what what was your reaction to how Charlie Cox was used and how he fit into this show? He was fine, Brian. He acted like the Daredevil from the Netflix shows. Um. Didn't care, obviously, for the costume, but that's another topic. Um, but I thought he was fine. The, the His scenes with Miss Lai were, were great. It all felt like Matt Murdock. Nothing changed. Until we got this last sequence. Was just, <laughs> was Yeah, but that, that goes to my point of he was kind of like shoehorned into the finale, right? He really didn't feel like he was in place in at that picnic or whatever they were doing. Yeah. The, the fact that he showed up in costume was the, the thing that bothered me. I wouldn't have mind him at the picnic, but the, the fact that he showed up in costume and looked weird and came out of nowhere reminded me of the old Spider-Man from the Japanese ones that they made back in the day with Batman, with, with Spider-Man just drop in and stuff. It looked horrible. So yeah, I I think I'm generally with you here. I liked, so first off, I think he crackled with Maslani. I was like, these two, like I buy that there's a sexual tension between these two. Like, I don't know if that's just them naturally, like, but like the, the writing was quick when they were talking. I was like, I buy, I thought the, I actually thought the courtroom scene was good. Like I thought him as a lawyer defeating her, I actually thought it was pretty well written. I was like, this this works this goes to you know one of the ideas i have for you about sort of this show maybe pivoting toward more of a like a law and order spinoff where that aspect of the show would be featured more like for a show that marketed itself as a legal comedy we got precious little like true legal comedy 
And I actually thought that was one of the better legal scenes, maybe the best legal scene that we had in, in, the, se- in the season. So I like that. I like when they were just sitting next to each other. Something about Charlie Cox sitting on rooftops, man, it works. Like whether it's him and Bernthal or him and Mislani, <laughs> like we get some good scenes. I realize they're totally yeah, different yeah. scenes, but like there was a real attraction there at work. They, you know, Matt Murdock as a player, if they want to go that route, he can pull it off. That's not something we really saw on the Netflix show, but clearly like with this little window into that, it could work. Now, I didn't think that Daredevil worked very well in general. Okay. So like, so okay. I liked Matt Murdock. Mm, yeah. it is, and maybe it's, that's just something about this show because I felt like Jennifer Walters in gen form worked better than She-Hulk in She-Hulk form in general. And maybe that was that, but I didn't love Matt Murdock. So I'm kind of with you. There's something- Dead, Daredevil, Daredevil. No, sorry, like Daredevil. Daredevil. Yeah. Yes, Daredevil in costume on screen. Two things that jumped out to me that I didn't really like. One is, I think the, if they're gonna use the yellow, I think they've got the wrong shade of yellow. It's not. It doesn't look good on the screen. It, it doesn't like. It almost reminds me of like if you, if you got the Flash's costume wrong. Like it's it just like the yellow in the angles and the lighting they were using kind of looked almost more green. It was weird. It just didn't yeah. work. Um, so I didn't like the look. I thought the needle drop of the Netflix, I'm getting tired of these now. Like, are we gonna, are we gonna echo back to everyone's old school theme every time they pop up? Like, I'm good. I don't need the Netflix Daredevil theme playing for 10 seconds to remind me who this is. I know who it is, but I didn't love the action. And that was my, like, if I had a gripe, I thought the Netflix show had that brutality. It had a little bit of innovation with a single cam and like, it looked a little campy, to be quite honest, in this episode. He had one or two cool moments. Batman, with his, Robin. Yeah, like he had one or two cool moments with his with his staff. Sticks. Stick. Yeah. But the martial arts looked slowed down. It didn't look as intense. Like when he was going through the room and She-Hulk's kind of doing her thing, like he didn't look badass. And I was like, ah, he, he just doesn't look as agile. He doesn't look at so. And even when they were sort of pseudo fighting each other, he looked kind of clumsy in that. And I was like, I really hope this is not the choreography we're going with for Born Again because it, the fight scenes in the Netflix show set a very high bar and the, the, the Disney cannot come up four steps short of that. Brian, just who were the people that worked on this? Yes, bring them on board, please. <laughs> That's it. That's it. If y'all decide to deviate from what was already great, We're going to have, there's going to be problems. I agree. Oh, man. So, I don't know. Did you feel the same? Like, did he seem cool when he was going through that warehouse? Nah, I mean, no, no, no. I I didn't get that same feeling of the Batman Robin type of, I don't know. It looked kind of corny. Perhaps it was the colors, the, the lighting. It was probably too bright. I don't know. It just, and the bad guys, the henchmen, it just looks... Yeah, Batman Robin. It all can't be. That's what I thought. Yeah. Like nothing like like when he was fighting like what was the guy's name? Nobu and like like nothing like that. You see it, you see the style and the and the and the like, oh snap, we're gonna see something. But not this, yo. Not this. I don't know, Brian. I don't know. Uh I'm glad it is over, Brian. I'm glad it is over. Also. I had mixed emotions about Intelligentsia because it got me interested in episode seven when the content was pretty veering a little serious. I was like, okay, this is canon. You know, this ties to the leader. Maybe they hatched something here, but there was no payoff at all. It was just her former Tinder date or whatever who turned out to be this guy behind Intelligentsia and he was Hulk King. So like part of me was like, well, that's a big letdown. But then part of me was like, maybe it's good that they didn't like lump the leader or something into more this, serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like into this show and kind of ruin it for, for the future. So I, it just didn't pay off, right? Like Titania went nowhere as a character in this show. Like it just, there were a lot of that. There's a lot of that. It's like, we stuffed it, we stuffed it. And then like, we just didn't end up anywhere that was rewarded. And they, and the, the sad thing about it is they kept hyping it up for Titania to be something. Yeah. It was like, yeah, nothing really happened with your character. Anyway, 
But that's where it also felt like, as I, we talked about in our second show, you know, is this show going anywhere or not? And I kind of said, like, it felt like for the first six episodes, like we were just doing one-off vignettes, basically. But then late in the season, it felt like Marvel was like, yo, you gotta, you gotta tie this together. You gotta, you gotta propel something forward. And that was just so weak and so forced that it was like, why bother? Like, almost again, this goes to my point of, are you in or are you out? If you're going to do single episode comedy, do single episode comedy. Don't like drop all these strands and then try to make an, an overarching story that just winds up being kind of, you know, undeveloped and incomplete. Yeah. That moment reminded me of the mask. When a dude injected himself with the Hulk serum and he started turning into the, it reminded me of the mask. Goofy. Hey, the mask was a big hit though. In fairness, in fairness 30 years ago, that was Word. a big deal. Word. Jim Carrey, his performance is is Jim yeah. Carrey. But I agree with you. The 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 inflation of that of that guy into into the pseudo Hulk was just not, you know. And I guess. The show tried to save it by saying, hey, we know this is a joke and that tied into the whole, this finale stinks, I need a rewrite. But it, it, again, because it was hatched earlier in the season and this was like the moment, it still kind of felt like a letdown. That's what I mean by very uneven. So, I mean, you can give me your final postmortem, but I mean, for me, this we talked about it midway through. I mean, this thing is definitely my least favorite of the MCU shows by far. Yeah. I, you know, I only reason I would root for a season two is so we can do more shows about it. Um, but <laughs> but this is not one why I will rewatch a single piece of it. Yes, there's no need. There's no need. Um, Brian, I would I was just thinking about this show. This show would have been like a Matlock. I still watch Matlock from time to time. Look at you. I got ideas, Brian. I got ideas. Anyway. Speaking of, speaking of classic detectives, R.I.P. Angela Lansbury. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the finale. Um, I had one of my buddies call me up and talk to me about it because he, I guess he was that upset. This dude don't call me. And he decided to call me. <laughs> to talk about this um uh, he was mad tutu. about it shout out to tutu i i don't he sounded confused but towards the like what why like why what what's the point of all this what was the point you know why did you do this I'm telling you, once Baby got Zed, I don't know what they're gonna do to this kid. Put him in a school. What they're gonna do? What 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 purpose does he? Are they gonna? Are we getting towards the Savage Land? Is that where we're going? That's what it seems like. It. You know, honestly, though, as it pertains to as it pertains to the Hulk, there's only two things. There's only two things that get my attention: a recast of the Hulk, and a and a and a writer or a director. Who, who just brings a completely different tone, like whose who's DNA and whose resume is just in a totally dramatic and serious area. <clears throat> Until yeah. that happens, I just, I can't get behind this. I can't get behind this. One last word. The way that I would bring back the Hulk is to bring back his origin story of how he became the Hulk. You got Christopher Nolan doing his movie, Oppenheimer. If you know the Hulk, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. At it this point, it's been 20 years since we did an or I mean, in fair, because the 08 Hulk, the Norton Hulk didn't wasn't an origin, right? He already was, and we jumped into his story. Yeah. So we're 20 years removed now from the Eric Bana Hulk, which is the only origin we've ever seen you know, on, on the big screen. So you, could... I saw it last week, by the way, go ahead. <laughs> Giant green <laughs> doughboy. Um, yeah. Like, we, you know, we, we so we, we can kind of go back to that, but like, like I said, I mean, you want to stay with Bruce Banner though? 
what about like Amadeus Cho? What about what about going with one of the other alter egos as a way to just totally reset this? I don't know, I, I don't know, Brian, because I think for me we still haven't gotten the true Bruce Banner. Okay. I want to see Bruce Banner, the one that does not want to turn into the one who is frightened to death, the one who isolates himself but still finds it finds it within himself to want to help other people from time to time. And unfortunately, things like this happen and he has to go. And unfortunately, as well, collateral damage. Yeah. The horror that he leaves behind it. That's the story I want to see, Brian, because that is his story. Yeah, I, I agree, because I also feel like as he as he fits into, you know, Avengers or team ups, you want the other heroes looking at him as a dilemma, right? It's like we need this guy, but He's dangerous. at what cost? Right. And like we we kind of have just gotten away from that. Like they had it for a brief moment in the first Avengers, a little bit into Ultron, but like they tamed him a long time ago, yeah. you know? So that's, that's, that's part of the, I'm totally with you on that. I don't, and like I said, we know we're getting a Tatiana Zolani back and I'm totally fine with that. Cause I think she, as an actress, she did a fine job, but she also is not embodying that issue either because yeah. she's in control on both sides. So you can't really now leap to, oh gosh, like how do we, are we okay unleashing her or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really only the Hulk that we could reset to do this, but it feels like we're feels like we're going to be going down the the rabbit hole we don't like even further before we're we're done here. Yeah. Again, I say we do the Hulk give us the real Bruce Banner from from his origin story because Amadeus George and all, and all these other characters, I don't think a lot of people are really really know them. Okay. Um and it has to be from this character, the core of who he is. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the She-Hulk and some of the ideas we've thrown out there and, where, and what the, the Hulk should be going for because this ain't it. This ain't it. See you next time on the Nerd Jam Report.